What matters is that China could still in a few hours inflict more damage and kill more Americans than we were killed in all of America's previous wars combined, which must affect America's decisions and make any president think twice when the chips are down. That is awesome. American policymakers reluctance to acknowledge this reality is extraordinary, instructive, and unsettling. The most likely explanation for it is simply that the U.S. leader, that no U.S. leader wants to try convincing American voters that defending a U.S. ally in Asia is worth risking a de devastating nuclear strike on Los Angeles. And if they are not prepared to try to convince American voters of that, what chance would they have of convincing Chinese leaders? Dave, welcome to Detonation. Thanks like, for having me back on. This is this is a this is a really important thing. If if, if Sydney was nuked, I mean, uh, is America going to rally to her cause? Are they going to come? Are they going to save us, or are they just going to leave us in the dumps? Well, uh, after reading Hugh White's new book, which was just released this year, it seems Hugh White, who has a PhD, is a professor in strategic studies, he doesn't tend to believe that there would be a response. I've, I've read this book and I didn't really know anything about Hugh White until this year. I've done a little bit of research on him. But I've had this, uh, this theory for a very long time because I pieced together where the Chinese communities were and I came up with this, this theory quite a long time ago. And I, I mentioned this to you as more of a conspiracy theory off camera once. I'd like to start this off by asking your audience and hopefully there's people there watching right now. There are many people uh, yeah, there's, in there's, the a, there's a huge audience there, so I think we'll get a lot of uh, people if you, if you want to ask them an audience. If you guys are in the, the, the comments right now, I have a question for you. It's not whether you think Sydney could be nuked. The question is, if Sydney was nuked, how would the international community respond? What do you think would happen? And uh, if you have a look at uh, that, if you the paragraph uh, that Steele just read out from uh, Hugh White's book, he he makes it very clear that uh, if America was to react, then they uh, they would risk being nuked themselves, and that would be losing Hollywood, losing LA, losing Seattle. Uh, California will, would be a target for Chinese nukes, and therefore uh, it would be far too prohibitive for them to engage. And, and my theory is that uh, China and their 700 uh, submarines, uh, because Hugh White, his defense strategy is uh, island and sea and air defense, uh, it makes it easier for us to defend than to attack. It would be so expensive for the Chinese to want to try and attack us. So it, it just doesn't make sense that they would do that. And, and the savvy nature of the Chinese, this would be a cheap way uh, to meet an ends. Uh, and they have so many submarines. So my theory is that they could get a submarine off the coast of Australia and nuke. The, uh, the CBD of Sydney. Now, are you able to put up one of those photos that I that I sent you, the one where a 20 kiloton nuke hits Sydney CBD and it shows the radius? If you have a look at it, this is a 20 kiloton nuke. The, the inner radiuses would be totally destroyed and you see the, the gray outer radius, that's where the uh, radiation would hit. Uh, you could survive in that area but these suburbs that have been underlined, these uh, are Chinese suburbs. And uh, you guys know the saying, it, there's no Chinese in Chinatown. So the, the theory that there's all these Chinese in Chinatown, uh, it's, it's not very valid. Uh, th this is where the real suburbs are. And the one right at the top, that's Chatswood. Now, uh, that city is huge. It is like a Hong Kong just off the top of uh, Sydney CBD. It is enormous. Uh, I've got a few other images there, like the uh, the, the heat map. Uh, so you get a better understanding of what would be taken out in uh, if a 20 kiloton 
nuke was to hit Sydney CBD. A 40 kiloton nuke would reach Bondi Beach, so it would take out the entire city. Right at the top, there's Tullawong, and it goes all the way down to Chatswood. This has just been finished. Now, the all of these suburbs north, uh, there's Epping there. You see Epping. Epping links up with other uh, Chinese suburbs off it, like Eastwood. Uh, it, it links up with another a train line. So the whole, uh, you can see how this is a plan to uh, send a lot of foot traffic through to Chatswood. Chatswood is the largest suburb amongst all of those suburbs. It has a huge Westfield. Let's just say all the people from Chatswood aren't going to Tullawong. <laughs> Nobody goes to Tullawong. The people from Tullawong, uh, they're getting on the metro and they're going to Chatswood and they're going to spend their money in Chatswood. And Chatswood is home of the headquarters of Huawei, which has been banned in, a, in America, yet we have their headquarters here. Uh, they're opening up stores, uh, uh, Huawei stores. It's home of uh, Bank of China, which doesn't, the same as Huawei, doesn't hire any local people and is very racist towards the Australian people and, and helps uh, uh, money laundering in Australia and getting CCP members into our country. Chatswood is, in my opinion, a serious threat to Australia's national security. I know it's an outrageous claim, but I believe in the future you guys will look back and go, whoa, this is the only guy that actually identified this. I believe also that this 100-year marathon is linked to Chatswood, Sydney, Australia. Now, if Sydney CBD was nuked, uh, part of the, 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 the plan, I don't think Chatswood is ready yet, but it is a huge city already, and they're building it up. Uh, they, this suburb is a huge parasite on the Australian people. And when you look at it, if, if, uh, the Australian government used our taxpayers' money to, to, to build this metro, to, to send foot traffic to Chatswood, uh, to, to send more money and put it into the pockets of this Chinese Communist Party run colony in Chatswood, uh, and, and then all of the money goes into the pockets of the Chinese Communist Party people there, and then they don't pay tax, this money is not going back into the government. It's literally a parasitic city on our, uh, just north of Sydney CBD. It's called an Asian heat map, and it, it can identify where the Asian suburbs are. And you can kind of see that there's a loop around, it's like a, a radius around the CBD. There's no, that there, there is a lot of Asians within Sydney CBD. If you go through Sydney CBD, I'm the only white person. But um, what would I do if I was running the Chinese Communist Party, if I was Xi Jinping? Uh, Johnny 431 says, the West would get involved. Australia's full of resources and that's what they want. Thank you, Johnny of uh, three, uh, uh, four, three, one. Uh, so he's saying that the US, Canada, etc., would rally uh, here because of our resources. Uh, does no one care about history? I mean, what's about what about the fact that we've always been there for them? Uh, you know, does that does that mean anything, or is it just about resources at the end of the day? No, I, d I don't think history is really important. Uh, to what is happening today, but there's a pattern here. There's a pattern here. Okay, so when uh, when China took the Senkaku Islands and started getting all aggressive around Japan, everybody thought that America would step up to the plate and do something about it. But uh, Obama did nothing, and they haven't done anything yet except for these four knots, these freedom of nav navigation operations through the South China Sea nothing has changed. So their, their response has been so pitiful. Uh, I think it's more, uh, if, if, a, if a submarine was to get into, uh, off the coast of Sydney and, and launch a nuke into Sydney CBD, uh, and then Xi Jinping was to come out publicly and say, I, uh, China had nothing to do with nuking uh, Australia and uh, we want to give our condolences to the Australian people and we want to help out as much as we can. Uh, the international community would probably, they would think that it was China, but then they would think, hang on, uh, and 
every day that goes past that no one does anything about it, uh, the the likelihood that China has literally just uh, knocked off uh america's number one ally in the region or somebody here said international community would let australia burn laugh out loud so that's that's kind Ooh. of an interesting who's that, uh, who's that whole, person should get a real, real cte and then a whole bunch of people said yes 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 basically agreeing that australia yeah. is on its own in this regard it doesn't there Ooh. is no there is no china choice q white's first book was the china choice that's the one i've read i haven't got around to reading this one yet uh but the china choice Ooh. um you know, it's this balancing act and it's this assumption um, that America will always come to our aid. But in an isolationist mode, um, you know, it, it, America depends less and less and less on the world. I mean, it depends less on the world. It's it's it wants to go home. I Japan's the only country that has the same interest as us. And so, so, so would Japan would Japan rally if we got nuked? Good, good question. One hundred percent, no. And and in reverse, uh, and that's what Hugh White says. I'm I'm not a, a, an expert in uh, strategic studies. Hugh White is, and I respect the professor who has spent forty years of his life studying these things. And and he said, no. If if Japan was attacked tomorrow, Australia would not get involved unless uh, it it affected our interests. So how do we expect Japan to get involved uh, uh, if Australia was nuked? A very interesting point. He would said we'd, we'd just get branded nuke-phobic or radiophobic or something. But, but this is an interesting point. They might just quarantine us and say, oh, well, the, all of the, uh, the defense bilateral relationships are void. Their main city has gone down. They're basically defeated already. Uh, there's no point defending them. That's a very good point, uh, Larry, over there on the, yeah, the yeah. comment section. Well, well, yeah, Larry, 100%. That's that's exactly what I'm trying to get here, is that if we get nuked, our, uh, I know it seems like they're just, uh, the Opera House is, is not that important or the Harbour Bridge isn't that important, but if they were to disappear, that would be such a hit to the identity of the Australian people, first. Secondly... Uh, they'll take out the RBA, they'll take out the ASX, they'll take out our business hub. Uh, and third, we would be far too scared to get involved in anything that America would want us to get involved in in the future. With one foul swoop, overnight, China could knock out America's number one or number second most important ally in Asia. Great, great comment from Margot Huss. Uh, she says, the U.S. won't stand with us because China already owns us. My two cents. Thank you, Margot. Very good. Uh, Margot, if you haven't read this already, this is a very important book. Uh, and this is where Professor Clive Hamilton, uh, Silent Invasion, where he does talk about a lot of the political influence and he touches on a little bit of the, the economic influence uh, in Australia as well. I recommend Australians read those two books. Well, then, uh, most of the countries in Asia rely on China for their economy. And, and that's how America built their, uh, their, their, uh, their influence around the world. It's through their economy. Uh, and it doesn't seem like uh, any country in Asia would be willing to risk their economy for human rights. Uh, yes, the USA will and would if Sydney got nuked. Anxious Aussie says no, there are not enough of us Aussies loyal to the West. Uh, therefore, you know, they won't, they won't rally. Um, David Smith says the US would def uh, definitely get involved at this point, at the point of uh, Sydney getting nuked. Thanks, David Smith, for that comment. Uh, Johnny431, who's being a very good commenter tonight, says the only uh, only war will change the direction of the future back to nationalism. Oh, that's not an answer to the question. But anyway, uh, um, <laughs> uh, and um, oh, David Smith says something here interesting. He says uh, in 30 years, doubtful. So, uh, so uh, David, can you expand Ooh. on that for us? Because you're saying t tomorrow they will, but in 30 years, they might not be worth that. If David, if you could expand on that, we'd love to hear that. If you want to say that uh, America is going to get involved, you need to keep 
uh, keep in mind that America will be uh, risking uh, California being nuked. Yeah, exactly. So you have to you have to they think about to... the trade off effects, the yes. trade off impacts. There's no such thing as human rights, and uh, if you get nuked, don't think that God or any sort of magic is going to come and save you. I tend to believe there would be a long month of condolences. China would probably uh, then say, look, you know, we can send troops down there to help you out. Uh, we'll probably give you a, a loan and, and so do the some old the old fashioned salami tactics back from the Cold War. You know, the, you remember the salami tactics? There was a well, Hugh White mentions the Cold War and he mentions the Soviet Union. It says in his book that the Soviet Union were certain that if they did anything wrong, uh, to, if they attacked their neighbors, the United States would send nukes into the Soviet Union. Now, that is not the case today. China has been calling the United States bluff, and it's slowly uh, getting worse. Uh, the ultimate goal would be to knock uh, a country like Australia out of the, the alliance. Uh, and then there would only be a matter of time until America has been pushed out of uh, Asia totally. What, what, one says, uh, how can we raise, Ash David says, how can we raise awareness quickly without being called crazy? Or Ray Ray, as he says it. Um, how can we raise it? I mean, I mean, chats yep, like this, yep. hypotheticals <laughs> like you, you've suggested, uh, what if Sydney was nuked, are extremely good thought experiments, mm -hmm. um, mm. reading reading books. Uh, how do we raise awareness, Dave Lee, about things, including things like Chatswood, which is so fundamental and so important to, um, you know, unlocking the global game? I've noticed that uh, out in the public sphere, you have to become very specific and identify one specific problem and i've identified the chinese communist party and when i look around i realize that the if you just go out and you just focus on one thing uh, building awareness around the chinese communist party and then let the public run with it that's the only way that we can uh protect the west how we can fight back is by keeping the message as simple as possible. And by keeping the message as simple as possible, we focus on one thing, the Chinese Communist Party. And that's something everybody can get behind. Falun Gong, Falun Dafa, uh, Tibetans, Taiwan, the Hong Kong people, uh, the millions of people in Xinjiang that are Vegas. being persecuted, the uh, Mongolians, the Japanese, the South Koreans. Uh, Everybody can get behind one simple message. The, the, the problem with some people's messages is it becomes too complex. And I can sit down for hours, as you know, and go deep on all of these topics. But at the end of it, what do you take from that? You need to take one message. The Chinese Communist Party is the threat. That's the one message.